Hello, and welcome to the Exploratory. In this video, we'll explore writing pre-request scripts, which is JavaScript code that executes before a request is sent. So we'll take a look at several use cases and walk through some examples to help you get started using pre-request scripts. Let's take a look. So let's start by finding the pre-request tab. In this case, I'm looking at a collection called echo name collection, and I see pre-request script here, which is for the collection itself. So if I click it and were to write any code here, as it says, this will run before every request in the collection. But let's see it at a smaller level first, and let's look at pre-request script for an individual request. So I'm gonna look at this one, get and set a random first name. So this is just a basic request that uses the Faker.js library to click send, and I'll just get a random name. So Emerald, Antonio, uh, Tariq, and so forth. Um, but what I want to do is let's take a look at this pre-request tab here. So find it in this set of tabs up here. I'll click it. And I am going to just write a very basic console log that says, hi, before the request. And again, this is code because it's in the pre-request tab. This is going to execute before the request is sent. So if you're not familiar with the console in Postman, you can pull it up by finding this console button on the bottom left clicking it and pulling it up. And now we can see that we have all of this information from previous requests. So I'm gonna clear it out so we only have stuff for this new request. When I click send, I'm going to see hi before the request, and then we have information on the request that was sent. And I can unfurl this and see information about the request and the response and stuff. Um, but for now, I really just wanna focus on the fact that this code executed before the request was sent and before we got a response. So that's, you know, a basic example of, you know, using the console and, you know, you can debug using the console and outputs um, before any sort of pre-processing happens or the request gets sent. And let's just contrast this quickly with, I'm going to get rid of this and let's just have a console log. Now, I'm sorry, I'm in the tests tab here. And this is JavaScript code that gets executed after you receive a response. So in this case, we'll just say hello from after. And I will save this. Let's pull the console back up. Let's clear it. And now because we have this code that should run after and this code that run that should run before, we should see two consoles surrounding information on the request. And that's exactly what we see. So it's kind of cool. Now we have an idea of the workflow and when this code gets executed. So let's look at an example that's a little bit more interesting. I'm going to close the console. And I'm going to get rid of the console because we don't the console log because we don't need that before every request. And let's say now that we want to take information from this first request. So we want to save the first name, and we want to use it in a second request. And you can imagine this workflow being more complex in you know various real life workflows, but we're going to keep it simple for this video. So let's go ahead. I'm going to actually do a quick copy and paste here of some some JavaScript code. And all this is going to do is just save the response value called name uh, as a, a JavaScript variable called name. And then we're going to set the collection variable first name to that value. So if I click send here again, I'm going to save this value ADA as a collection variable. And to show you this happened, I'm going to come back over here to our collection and I'm going to look at variables and we can see that we do indeed have a first name of ADA. So this isn't necessarily pre-request stuff for this request, but we're going to see how we can use this information in our second request um, in the pre-request tab. So let's imagine we're running these in order. Now I want to use that information ADA. And right, if I want to pass in or send a request that has a full name, I don't have that information right now. I only have the first name. So let's do some processing in the pre-request script for this request. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, I'm going to collapse this so we have more room. And we're going to say pm.collectionvariables.set. So that's the same thing we did before. And let's say you know now the variable we want is full name. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and do pm.collectionvariables.get. And we did this thing where we saved the first name before. And Postman automatically populated that. And because that's just a string, let's go ahead and add in Smith. And now what this line of code should do 
is because it's in the pre-request script, we should make a new collection variable called full name. And what that's going to be is the value returned from our collection variable first name. And then we should just add on Smith to that request. So if I go ahead and click send, right? So right now, full name is unresolved. It doesn't exist. But if I click send, we should have a successful full name come back. Um, and that's because the code that saved full name was run before this request was sent. So by the time this request fired off, full name was uh, a resolved variable and we had Ada Smith. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and save this. And now the last thing I wanna show, right, is let's go ahead, go back to our collection and to the collection variables. Let's get rid of them. And let's say that we wanted to have code that ran before every single request. Now I could copy and paste it in the pre-request script for each and every request, but if I have hundreds of requests, that's not really a scalable process. So one of the things we talked about early on in the video was this pre-request script for collection uh, for collections. So I'm gonna come here and let's just say I wanna see the name of each request that's about to be run. So I'm gonna do just another console log and say the request about to be run is, and I'm gonna make use of um, our PM object. So I'm just gonna do PM.info.requestName. And like it says, so any code that's written here will be run before each and every request in the collection. So this is great. You know, I could just have a console log that you know iterates and just shows us you know which request number we're on. But in this case, in my console, I want to see the name of each request. So I'm going to pull the console up again, clear this stuff out, and now I should say the name of each request um, before it gets executed, before it gets run. So let's click the collection runner. I'm gonna click this run echo name button. And this is just gonna run each of these requests in order. And I do in fact see that the request about to be run is get and set random first name, and then it goes and fires off that request. And that's because this was in the pre-request script. Same thing here, it tells us that the script, uh, the request that's about to be run is this add last name in pre-request. And we see that we do have a full name as uh, that parameter. And those are some basic examples of using the pre-request script and how you can make use of them. And that's the basics of getting started with pre-request script. For more information, check out the documentation and the links below in the description.